says, be again, y'all. Wake up out there. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up for the children. Teach them well. All right. Education. But if Frederick Douglass once said, again, it's easier to raise strong children than it is to repair a broken man. Here's my proposal for the Memphis City Schools. Listen, Memphis. Tell your representative of your district to listen to what I'm saying. This is R2C2H2, the artist, also known as Ronald Cortez Heard the Second, telling you a solution to help our kids achieve in the 21st century and beyond. Listen, everybody. Here's my proposal. It should be mandatory for every kid in the Mississippi schools to learn the history of their school and their community. There should, there should be textbooks and other teaching tools allowed in the classroom produced by folks who know about the richness of the Memphis community and history for the kids to access and learn about. It should be mandatory before they graduate that they know about the history of their schools, tradition, and the community from which they came. Because Marcus Garvey said, a people without history is like a tree without roots. And why I tell you that? Because Memphis is very unique. Y'all don't understand the history of Memphis, the richness of the history of Memphis. They say that Memphis is the distribution hub of the country. That means that all the supplies and whatnot, you see all these trucks and trains coming in and out of Memphis. Memphis represents the multi-billion dollar hub of American economics. This is the place where everything comes through. Commerce must come through here. This is why you got the Nike warehouse, which is like a headquarters, like the second headquarters. Uh, this is why you got FedEx. This is why you got UPS. You got a lot of places here that make Memphis if not their headquarters, one of the most important places in terms of their company. This is why, people, there's a lot of money that's coming in and out of Memphis. Now, this is why I tell people right here, Memphis is also known. This is my terminology. So you hear, well, oh, I got this from r 2 c 2 h 2 the Artemis, on Real Talk with the Artemis. Cultural commerce. Memphis has cultural commerce. What I mean, Memphis has, has did so much to make the uh, a pop culture, American culture. Uh, world renowned. A lot of great folks came out of Memphis. For example, Aretha Franklin was born in Memphis. A lot of people don't know that. The first jazz studies program was started at Manassas High School by James Melvin Lunsford, known as Jimmy Lunsford, one of the greatest swing band leaders of all time. Matter of fact, his swing band was the most popular among African Americans in the 30s and 40s. They had a bigger following than Duke Ellington and Count Basie, and he was the house band for the Cotton Club. And also, he was the number one attraction for 10 years at the Apollo Theater. This is a dude that was, became the first high school band director in Memphis City School's history on his own initiative. Jimmy Lunsford. Learn that name. He's buried in Elmwood Cemetery. Been dead since 1947. But you know, the sad thing about it is, you ask a lot of people in the Memphis School system or in Memphis who Jimmy Lunsford is, the only folks that probably give you an answer are black folks over 70 years old. How is it that a man who started Memphis music education in the public schools not remember better than he is? Why did he want to be buried in Memphis? That's a good question. But you got so much history here. Richard Wright, one of the greatest novelists in American history, grew up in North Memphis. Richard Wright, black boy, native son. Richard Wright, North Memphis. And uh, you look at, I talk about Jimmy Lawson was a high school band director at Manassas High School. Look at the, the, the talent that came out of Manassas High School. Uh, you know, look at the child that came out of Douglas High School. Look at the child that came out of Booker T. Washington High School. Matter of fact, the first rock and roll star went to Booker T. Washington. Johnny Ace, whose biggest hit came when he died, Pledging My Love, which was also, coincidentally, Elvis Presley's last song that he recorded. Johnny Ace, he's forgotten about. Uh, there's so many people we could talk about. Hamilton, the great Larry Lee, Jimmy Hendrix's best friend, went to Hamilton High School. And he played with Jimi Hendrix in Woodstock and was Al Green's band director for 30 some years. A lot of these folks uh, that are worried now are not so well known in their hometown. Like they said, a prophet is always without honor in their hometown or country. But everywhere else you are acknowledged as a prophet. So you got a lot of these people that are still alive living in your community. Like you look at that old person, oh that old person, he just, oh, Mr. Fogarty, he just a full old fogey. Uh, he don't want us on his grass. He might have been a Negro League baseball player like Joe Scott. Or she, or she might have been a movie star. You know, you know the first all-black talkie produced by Hollywood was done over there by Lamar Owen College back in the late 20s called Hallelujah. 
A lot of people from Memphis in the black community played or starred in that film. It was nominated for an Oscar. So you got the first, this is before Hustle and Flow came out in 2005. We had the first black, all black talkie in Hollywood history. You no, know, when I mean talk, I mean you can hear people's voices come out their mouth, the sounds they make with their mouths, talkies. So you got that in Memphis, and nobody acknowledged that. There's no historical market there, okay? The first all black talkie movie produced in Hollywood history was done over in South Memphis by Lamont on College called Hallelujah. Part of it was, but they had a Memphis cast. See? Uh the mud of gospel music. Come on now. Tied in Booker T. Washington for a number of years. The mud of gospel music. So you say, who is the mother of gospel? Well, I'll tell you that the next show. But there's so much history here. Matter of fact, uh Louis Armstrong. His second wife, Lil Hyde Armstrong, the piano player, came from Memphis. She forced Lil to get out of his mentor's King Oliver band and then started his own solo career. And she is so important to get, become him a superstar. Number one, she have arranged the Hot Fives and Hot Seven recordings. He be Jeebies, none. Quest and Blues. And also, she got my gig in New York City with Fletcher Henderson, which made him the number one. Most influential jazz musician of his time, and really of all time. Since from Memphis did that, y'all. Wake up, everybody. Wake up. Seize the moment. The time is right. This is Artemis. Sign it off. Colin Layman, I'd like to invite you all to buy R2C2H2, the art of his first book, James Reese Europe, Jazz Lieutenant, which is featured on the Smithsonian Institute list for jazz books recommended for kids and young adults list. This is my first book. I wrote and illustrated this book. Great illustrations in the book. Great text. It talks about a pioneering jazz musician by the name of Lieutenant James Free Sheriff, he was the first black man to play old Carnegie Hall back in the day and the first black person to lead troops in the battle during World War One. And this is my first book. Some might say my magnum opus, but I say the best is yet to come. But please feel free to pick, feature uh, this book in your collection by buying it at Amazon.com or you go to the official website at www.jazzlieutenant.blogspot.com well, again, yeah, that's www.jazzlieutenant.blogspot.com. It is very important that the lion tells his story. We already hear the hunter's side of the story. Now it's time for the lion, the conquering lion, to tell his story. So please support this effort by your favorite artist, R2C2H2, the artist. This is James Reese Europe, Jazz Lieutenant, an award winning book on the Smithsonian Institute. Jazz book for kids and young adults list. Buy it at Amazon.com or get it at www.jazzlieutenant.blogspot.com.